Hello, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us on this Zoom call. I have Dennis with us. He's with Sat7. It's an absolutely fascinating YouTube uh, video here. We are going to talk about how they are touching people for Jesus Christ in the Middle East. Stay tuned. Are you a ministry or individual exploring global missions? It's burning your heart. You want to get there, but you just don't know how. I would love to walk you through that process. My email address is in the description of this video. Email me anytime. Are you wanting to connect with a community of mission-minded ministers? Check out our Facebook group. We would love to have you join us. The link is in the description as well. Finally, make sure you subscribe to our channel and share our videos with other mission-minded people. Thank you for watching. Hey, Dennis, thank you so much for joining us on this Zoom call. You know, I just uh, met you probably about three or four months ago. I just think you've got a fascinating work that you do with Sat7 in the Middle East. So I thought, you know, I want him to come on and just share what you guys are doing for the gospel of Jesus Christ in the Middle East. Thank you so much, Dennis. Well, thanks for having me. It's always good to talk about what God's doing to build his church around the world. And a lot of times we don't think of that context in the context of the Middle East and North Africa, but God is doing amazing work. His people are uh, working and uh, witnessing. And uh, so it's a great opportunity for the gospel in, in the Middle East and North Africa. Yeah, because, you know, they always say the unreached and the 1040 window. Uh, so I assume you're working in those nations yourself uh, through Sat7. We, we actually cover the western half of the 1040 window. And our mission is to make the gospel available to everybody in the Middle East and North Africa. So you think about uh, limited access countries, uh, Iran, uh, uh, Afghanistan, you think of the Gulf, you think of North Africa. How can we make the gospel available to everybody? And so that's our mission. Yeah. And if you don't mind, uh, and I know this isn't in the questions that we talked about, but there's a lot of people that aren't, aren't aware of what the 1040 window is. You know, a lot of you know, I don't want to try to be critical, but there's just a lot of Christians that are oblivious to the Great Commission around the world. Can you just share with us real quickly what the 1040 is? Well, 10 degrees above the equator to 40 degrees above the equator. So, you know, look on the map and find the equator. And that's just off the coast of West Africa all the way up to the 40 degrees. Uh, so that's uh, through uh, Southern Europe, you know, from the east to the west. And so... You know, we cover everything in the western half. Uh, so you take uh, from, uh, you know, Afghanistan and that area coming back west, we cover all those countries. Yeah. And, and these are basically the 1040 windows, basically the unreached population of the world for the gospel of Jesus Christ. Uh, you know, uh, I'm in Honduras. You know, it's a heavily... It's a heavily uh, uh, area concentrated of, of people that's doing the work for Jesus Christ in these areas. But there's areas of the world that there's not a lot of concentration. And so that's when they say 1040 window, that's that's what we're speaking of, is these are unreached areas of the globe. And that's what Sat7 is doing. You know, Dennis, if you don't mind, just share with us a little bit uh, about how did you get involved in missions? Well, I got involved because my parents were working with the church in West Africa, and so I was born into this. Uh, you know, five months old, my folks left the States to go learn French and then go down to Africa. But before that, uh, my dad's uh, parents were uh, church workers and missionaries in Minnesota, and huh? they were school teaching, and they saw an area of northern Minnesota that didn't have a uh, gospel witness, so they left school teaching and bought 80 acres and a team of horses. Wow. And they moved up to northern Minnesota. He farmed 80 acres with a team of horses, and he started church, Mildred Bible Church. And it's still thriving. The town's gone, but uh, the church is thriving. And uh, so for Grandpa Weens, you, you didn't have to be a full-time Christian worker or a missionary, but you had to be willing to be one of them in your Christian development and your spiritual maturity. And if God took you to be a doctor or lawyer or an engineer, that's okay. But you just had to be willing to consider it. And so three of his own kids became, you know, full-time missionaries. And uh, my dad was one of them. And um, so that's where really where it started. But I, I got involved in missions because my folks were missionaries. And then after I came back to the States for college, 
And after in college, met my wife and we went on short term. We saw how we could become involved in second generation Christians in West Africa, where we, I had grown up. And so we came back to the States after four months and uh, prepared to go back full time. And it was during that time in West Africa, 27 years uh, working in sub-Saharan West Africa, Mali and Ivory wow. Coast. And it was towards the end of that time, heard about this ministry starting up that was SAT7 and the mission and vision of SAT7 captured our hearts. It's the vision to see a growing church in the Middle East and North Africa, uh, to see a church that's confident in its faith and in its witness, and to see a church that's contributing to its culture and to its society. And so we were captured by that vision and wanted to be a part of it. Not that you know we could go learn Arabic and contribute that way, but we felt we could do more for the church in the Middle East by being a voice and an advocate for them in the West. So we transitioned back to America and became involved in SAT7. Yeah, that's awesome. So basically you're just a, uh, just a, you know, in your history, in your family, uh, uh, you guys are workers for the gospel of Jesus Christ. So that's awesome that, you know, you're following in the footsteps of your grandfather and ministering, uh, you know, the word of God um, to people around the world. You know, if you don't mind, just share a little bit more about SAT7 and, and what are they doing in, in the Middle East? Okay, SAT7 is a Middle East broadcast media ministry based in the Middle East. So we're not American, we're not Western. It started in the Middle East. It has a Middle Eastern board, uh, and it started 26 years ago with just two hours of broadcast a week and then a repeat of two hours on Sunday. And that was a slow beginning. They didn't have a camera. They didn't have staff. It was just the vision that uh, Terry Ascott, the founder, had. And it's been an amazing growth since then as we begin to grow. And everybody thought it was a bad idea. You can't put Christians on television. And there's all these reasons not to do it. But he so believed in this vision to have a platform for the church, for Christian witness. Uh, and that's the time when satellite dishes were coming in. Uh, Egypt and Saudi Arabia and all these countries were inundated with satellite dishes. And so uh, he leased some time on a satellite and began broadcasting. And it became a very pow powerful model. And uh, still, it's the biggest broadcasting, the biggest distribution of content there is. But we've expanded beyond that to web streaming. And last year, uh, during COVID, we launched Sat7 Plus, which is an app available globally. And all of our four satellite TV channels now are streaming live on an app that everybody has access to. So it's it's been wow. amazing growth over these 26 years. Yeah. And, you know, uh, we've been doing this video for five minutes and I just really kind of noticed the picture behind you. Satellite dishes all over. I'm assuming that's a real photo there. That's a real photo. And this is in uh, Egypt. And, uh, you know, people always ask, well, do people have satellite dishes? Well, 85, 90 percent of every home has a satellite dish. And so our investment is in the production of programming because it's the satellite dish is a priority purchase of every family. So they are going to have a satellite dish because once you have a satellite dish, you have outside information, you have endless entertainment and there's no subscription fees like we have in the West. So you, you invest in a, in a dish and a tuner and a TV, and then you get all the channels off those satellites and you just point your satellite dish at the different satellites. And so there's hundreds and hundreds of satellite channels. Yeah, okay. we are we are one of them. So we have two Arabic channels. One is a children's channel, which is really unique. And it's been our commitment since the start of Sat7 that we would provide something for the children. So we allow children to produce programs for children. So it's really cool. creative. It's very well done. Uh, it's streaming live on the app. You can go uh, sat7plus.org and find that app. And then we have a Farsi channel for Iran and Afghanistan. It's on the most watched satellite over Iran. Uh, in Afghanistan, and we're doing a lot of live programming in Dari for Afghanistan. And then we're on the government regulated satellite of Turkey, Turksat, uh, with a channel. And so we have production crews, and uh, about 80% of all of our content is produced in the Middle East with local Christians. Okay, so, so how many countries do you cover right now? Well, on the satellite, we cover. Uh, basically the 25 countries of the Middle East and North Africa. So those are the Arabic, primary Arabic speaking countries. Uh, then we cover the Farsi, Dari speaking countries of Iran, Afghanistan, and then up into Tajikistan, and then the Turkish speaking countries, basically Turkey. Uh, so we covered the major languages of the Middle East. And so we're starting to broadcast out into some other 
languages like uh, Berber in North Africa or um, Tajik in Tajikistan, uh, but primarily the three major languages of the Middle East, which is Arabic, Farsi, and Turkish. Okay. And then, you know, how does Sat Sabin uh, minister the gospel of Jesus Christ in these hostile nations? I mean, don't they have an ability to say, look, you're not broadcasting this off of our satellites? I mean, how, how do you guys, I don't want to call it circumventing, but how do you work around that, uh, you know, hostility, so to speak? Well, we're not clandestine. We're, we put our logo on our buildings. We want to be part of culture and society. We want to speak into the realities, but do it from a Christian worldview and biblical value. Uh, we teach the whole counsel of God. But the thing to remember is that we're allowing the church in the Middle East to make their claim to a biblical Christianity in a culturally appropriate, in a positive way. So we don't start with comparisons. We don't start with that. We're simply declaring the truth of the gospel. And when you have a theme of God's unconditional love, you have a theme of uh, forgiveness, you bring a message of hope. These are themes that resonate in everybody's heart. Everybody's looking for meaning, for purpose. Uh, people are looking for hope. They're looking for, for God's unconditional love. And so that's where we start, and we, but we don't shy away from any aspect of Scripture. We, we broadcast live church services, and on Sunday, uh, we broadcast, for example, a resurrect, Resurrection Church in Beirut with Pastor Hikmat, and whatever he's preaching goes out, and um, he says every, every home's become a church because they broadcast, they play it in their homes, mm -hmm. and everybody around hears it. So it's an amazing opportunity. So we allow the church in the Middle East to yeah. make their claim to a biblical Christianity. Well, and the, the thing that you and I uh, talked about before the video started, the importance of is it's the nationals that's working this. It's not the, the Western face that's on these broadcasts. It's actually the people of those nations that are, are broadcasting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Am I correct? That's right. And they know their own culture. They know their own people. They know how to present it. Uh, you know, in the Western cultural paradigm of guilt righteousness, uh, they're in a different cultural paradigm of uh, of uh, fear and um, honor, shame. And so you get these different cultural paradigms in different parts of the world. Well, local people can speak and explain the gospel in that context in an incredible way in local illustrations. So it's a, a great partnership between uh, the West and allowing the church in the Middle East to come alongside and produce these programs. So out of we're producing, we're broadcasting about a thousand hours of content a week now wow. across all of our different platforms. Eighty percent of it is produced in the Middle East with local Christians. So we have teams in Arabic, we have teams in Farsi and Dari, we have teams in Turkish that produce, and then also have audience relations because you know millions of people are watching, and so. Lots of people are contacting social media, WhatsApp, Telegram, text messaging calls uh, come in. So we have audience relations teams in their language, in their heart, culture, and language that take the calls and can uh, walk them through challenges that they're facing in their lives. Wow, that's awesome. And, you know, uh, I like how, how you say because you, you, you stay away from criticism. You know, it's 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 not about it's not about uh, criticizing this one belief of faith. Uh, towards the other it's you you just project the, the message of hope of jesus christ and there's no need to sit there and and sort of speak bash the uh, another form of faith and uh that's that's your guys' stance and and it's yeah we don't we don't get into any on-air comparisons we simply declare the truth of the gospel yeah and the holy spirit takes his word and works Amen. in the heart of individuals with his word so we simply declare declare and explain and we show the church, we take the, for example, we take the church out of the four walls of the church because a lot of people historically haven't really seen what goes on in church because they haven't attended church. But now in broadcast media, we can take the church out of the four walls of the church and let everybody see what is true, authentic, biblical Christianity. What is God's unconditional love lived out in the faith and witness of Christians who live this message of, of, of the gospel through their lives and people see that what they've been taught about Christianity and what they see in the lives of Christians are so different and people are drawn and they see in Christians what's lacking in their own lives and people are drawn to the gospel message. 
Yeah. Well, I think, I think this is a good word just for believers anywhere. You know, I think sometimes even, even in the States, it just seems like there's such hostility uh, against people. And sometimes that hostility comes from people that who profess the faith of Jesus Christ. And to me, uh, they, you know, for various reasons, they, they make it a sword versus something to bring hope to someone's life and draw them. And sometimes I think one of the most important things that we can do as believers is live our life in Christ in front of people and not have to constantly be attacking people, so to speak, in their beliefs, but just give them a, uh, something to look at and say, wow, that's the hope that I want in my life. So mm-hmm. it's like you guys are you. That's what you are doing. And you don't have to have this message of hostility to win people for Christ. You just win people for Christ for hope with hope. So I think that's I speak. A, I speak on a. I speak at a lot of churches, and one question I probably get more than any other after I present what we're doing is I get a question, well, I thought you couldn't witness in the Middle East. And so in the Western Christians, they have this mindset that wherever there's hostility, you can't witness. But they forget, in the West, we forget that just living your life, living your Christian values in front of others is a tremendous witness rather than talking about what you believe to live out what you believe is a powerful witness and you know you take places like uh iran and my understanding is there's no place in iran for a local iranian citizen or christian to actually attend church mm-hmm. and yet iran has the fastest growing church in global christianity wow. and and it's it's iranian christians who in hostility who live out their christian faith in such a way that people see what's in their lives and what they believe and they're drawn to that that value system and uh you know with dreams and visions and it's just amazing what god is doing today in areas that we perceive in the west to be you know hostile or limited access uh but god is doing an amazing work uh in many of these places that we think you know don't have the gospel Mm-hmm. So what, what do you see for the future of, of missions in SAT-7, you know, in, in these particular areas of the world that we're ta- talking about? Well, I mean, we have to continue to look at ways that we can distribute content uh, to people who don't have the content. So, I mean, we look at broadcast satellite television. We're using satellite TV, but not everybody's going to watch satellite TV. So we've launched an app, SAT-7 Plus. It's available on any browser globally. Uh, just go to SAT7PLUS and look for this this uh, app. Uh, about 27 million people today in Egypt will be on Facebook. Wow. And so we need to leverage social media platforms like Facebook. Uh, you can't do a, you know, a whole hour TV program for a Facebook environment. You got to, you know, package it differently. You got to share it differently. But to continue to look at where technology is going, where people live their lives, and how we can put the gospel content on platforms where people live their lives and engage them in the message of the gospel, the hope of the gospel, the message of God's unconditional love. And so we're looking at different ways of distributing content, uh, you know, because we really want to make the gospel available to to everyone. So, I mean, like literally you guys... I mean, because sometimes you see ministries like, let's say, let's look at COVID, you know, COVID caught a lot of ministries off guard, you know, literally, oh, they, absolutely. Yes. they lived, you know, they, they lived maybe 10 years behind in technology. Once COVID hit, it's like, well, wait a minute, how are we going to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that even attend our church? And now I'm finding ministries that embrace this, this technology, and now they're running with this technology and they're finding that this technology is a very important component of, of their, uh, you know, of their ministry. I know one gentleman um, that literally during COVID, he exploded in ministry. He's exploded around the world in ministry because he embraced technology. So it's, it's, it's refreshing to see that SAT7 is, is kind of like, not ahead of times in the sense, but they're right along with technology and they're following that technology to say, how can we embrace this technology to further advance the gospel of Jesus Christ? Well, we were already doing digital before COVID, but we then expanded, you know, mm-hmm. really uh, learned how we could expand the digital because, you I mean, Iran's been hostile to Christianity for a long time already. 
And we were doing uh, digital and virtual and providing discipleship and church services uh, through apps and through satellite uh, even before COVID. But COVID really taught us how we could expand and how we could go live with apps and social media. And it just revolutionized and expanded on what what we're really doing. And a lot of people, I know a lot of people are on ministries are on hold waiting for COVID to get over because we had this mindset that we have to do training in person. We have to disciple in person we have to do biblical education bible school education in person i mean that's we don't replace that but in hostile environments and so many christians are living in isolation how can we still provide discipleship theological education um, how can we help people grow in their faith even if they're living in hostile environments or isolation and then the other thing is uh orality a lot of people haven't had the uh, privilege of education especially women because when they were girls, uh, the governments didn't allow them education. So how can we bring discipleship to somebody who doesn't know how to read and write? And even because they haven't had this privilege, they still have the right to be discipled. And so how can we do it uh, visually, orally? How can we provide wow. some of these resources to grow people in their faith and grow them in leadership? And so there's a lot we can do in missions uh, using technology. And again, I, I'd say that we don't replace traditional models sure sure we we complement we come alongside and um, you know it's a great win-win partnership if uh, ministries in country on the ground uh, we come in through digital through social media through satellite so we don't compete uh, we complement yeah and so a lot of people think well either you're gonna do dig you're gonna do broadcast media or you're gonna do traditional models but we need to change the mentality that we really don't compete. It's going to take all of us working together to have the gospel spread and make it available to, to everybody. Yeah. Cause I mean, I just can, you know, I'm not saying that this is takes place, but I, I, I just feel like I can see sat seven, like they're looking at every perspective, every angle that's possible to not only embrace the technology, but every way to minister the gospel of Jesus Christ to those that they're ministered to. It's just fascinating how, you guys are just embracing anything and everything possible to keep, you know, keep the, the truth of the word, but also just uh, find angles and ways to do that. And it's just fascinating how you guys are doing that. Part of our uh, mission statement is to contribute to the culture and society. You take on uh, like Syria and Syria. Uh, when the war started there, a lot of schools were closed. They were blown up. Uh, ISIS and Al Qaeda didn't like education. A lot of teachers displaced. Uh, and so, a lot of these uh, school-aged children didn't have education for at least five years. The United Nation calls them a lost generation. Wow. Well, Sat7 took cameras into a classroom and filmed it and put it on the satellite and made free education available uh, in refugee camps. Anybody that had a smart device, a satellite dish could get uh, Arabic uh, supplemental education. Uh, we don't, rep we don't uh, replace the in-classroom but where you don't have the classroom, uh, we can do a lot of education. And we're finding that while we focus this project, my school, and it's under the SAT7 branding of Academy, what we call Academy branding, um, my school has been very, very beneficial to mothers who bring their kids to social centers, to places where they can watch. They watch in refugee camps on smart devices and TVs. A lot of these mothers now are learning to read and write <laughs> and do math just by bringing their kids and watching with their children. And so we're doing it to help the culture and society, but of course we're, we're biblical values, Christian worldview, so we don't violate any of that, but we can help build the culture and society and help solve some of these uh, global issues like education. So we've taken on uh, hate speech. It was a campaign by United Nations, Sat7's taken that on. Uh, we we take on a lot of the perceptions, for example, on disability. So we're trying to really speak into some of the big issues of the broader culture. Of course, we do everything from our biblical worldview, uh, biblical values. Yeah. Now, you know, I'm going to throw you a, a side question here. And I, I think okay. you're, you're going to be good at answering this. You know, we keep on talking about culture. And, you know, I've had... Uh, uh, 
you know, I've had Americans come and visit us here in Honduras. And, you know, obviously it's a different culture here. And we understand that we we need to understand and, and minister within their culture, so to speak, so they can receive the word of God. I mean, when you speak of, of ministering God's word in their culture, some people are like, wait a minute, you know, I, I'm not going to bend to their culture. I'm just going to tell them what Jesus is and who Jesus is. And sometimes I just think that we can have this bulldog mentality just to bulldoze over various cultures. And they feel like it's a, a weak mindset that they got to contextualize the gospel of Jesus Christ within their culture. I mean, just share with us a little bit about the importance of understanding the culture that you're ministering the gospel and you're not changing the gospel, but what you're doing is you're helping them understand more so in their context, so to speak. Hopefully I said this right. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, it's very important to understand the culture, the heart language. And, you know, as a Westerner, I can say something, but as somebody in the Middle East can take that same thing and it can be understood in vastly different ways. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, as a Westerner, I got to be careful uh, in how I explain stuff because words have definitions. Some words are politically charged. And so, yeah, the, the, the dynamics of it are very, very different. So you got to be really careful. You got to understand the culture. You got to understand the language. You got to understand uh, how to be appropriate. And uh, yeah, so culture is incredibly important. Well, we we allow the local culture, who already knows all this, uh, to make uh, to make the programs, deliver the programs, and do the audience relations. So yeah, it's a great great model. Well, I, I'll give you an example. Last night, I was ministering the word in a church last night, and I asked my uh, uh, translator, I said, do they know the term? And I've been here nine years, but I just didn't know this. Do they understand, get the monkey off my back? You know, and sometimes they oh, yeah. will, you know, and, and I, I know this is a simple thing to explain, but she's like, no, not at all. We don't understand that. So, you know, it's like, you got to understand what do they under what how do they relate and how do they communicate and the words that they right. communicate with and you've got to embrace that you know uh, we i was talking to another short term team specialist and they they gave a story of how they went to go help the gypsies in romania and you know the american mindset is just you know we're gonna we're just gonna uh build five houses this week and you know we're just on a timetable we're on time crunch we got to do this and you know the the gypsies were like slowly taking down the old building and they're like, no, let's just cut it down. Let's just take sledgehammers and haul it off to the dump. And, and the gypsies were highly offended by that. And, and, and then once somebody kind of realized in their mind, wait a minute, we need to understand why they're, they're wanting to take it down piece by piece, you know? And it was because they were salvaging and they were going to take those pieces of Absolutely. that building over to their homes. They were going to repair areas of their homes. They were going to, yeah. you know, use it as firewood and so forth and so forth. So it's just really important that, that when you look, consider culture, you have to really understand their mindset and how they look at things and, and minister the gospel of Jesus Christ around that. But like you said, you're using the nationals of those nations to do that. And it's not like you're bringing in, you know, the, the people of the West to do so. So yeah, right. So the role that we we play in America is we steward resources towards this vision in the Middle East and North Africa. So, for example, Sat Seven, we salary about two hundred thirty uh, people across the Middle East uh, in our studios in Egypt and Beirut and Istanbul and on the island of Cyprus. But rather than have them raise support our local churches, we raise resources here so we can salary them and they work long hours in production, audience relations. It's a, and they have a you know, very strong commitment to the, the vision and mission of SAT7. And so it's this partnership where we can raise resources and uh, they do the work of the ministry. So it's, it's working quite well. Amen. Well, you know, Dennis, in closing, uh, I just think you're a, a gentleman of wealth of information. And I just feel, I, I just want you to challenge those that are watching this video. You know, because I just think sometimes uh, us in the Western culture, we, we, you know, we have this tendency to, 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 you know, align ourselves more so with safety and comfort and so forth. And it's just like, it's just like the, 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 the Western world of the, the, the Christian, you know, of Christians are just forgetting about the world, the world great commission, the demand of Jesus Christ of the great commission. And sometimes that great commission is only going to the 
the borders of the of the city, you know, and, and they don't have a heart for the nations. I mean, how can you encourage those that are watching to to consider more so of a global mindset missions? Well, I think there's a lot that we in the West can learn from the the church in hostile environments, the persecuted church, uh, isolated believers, their tremendous faith, their commitment to their faith. And I think for us in the West need to change some of our stereotypes, our perceptions, uh, you know, things that we thought were right. Uh, we need to look at it differently from a different perspective. And uh, there's just so much we can learn by, from our brothers and sisters in other areas. So don't uh, be quick to, you know, form conclusions before you've really looked at it. And I'd, I'd encourage people just listen to the news and pray through the news because as you pray through the news, uh, there's a church in those countries, there's national leadership, there's pastors, there's persecution, there's challenges, uh, there's need to just pray through the new, uh, news and um, let God touch your heart as you pray. Amen. Amen. Well, Dennis, it's been awesome having you on and just sharing about what Sat7 is doing and what you're doing and uh, for the gospel of Jesus Christ. And I just thank you for your work and your heart uh, to be involved. You know, um, you know, I, you know, I just believe that, you know, uh, you're a gentleman that probably could be retired and, you know, enjoying a, a condo in Arizona, but you're still actively involved and you're still, you know, actively involved in the kingdom of God and just uh, helping advance the gospel of Jesus Christ around the world. Thank you so much for your heart and your service uh, to what you're doing. Thank you for having me on. And I encourage people to get on our websites, SAT. Uh, number seven usa.org read some of the stories we're on social media facebook instagram on those platforms and the middle east course uh, we just crossed uh one million arabic subscribers to arabic youtube uh arabic facebook wow so uh where a lot of social media just search for sat7 on social media platforms and uh read some of the stories of how god is using this uh impacted lives uh it, the stories are amazing so I encourage people to read some of those stories. All right. Thank you, Dennis. I appreciate it.